All right, guys, we got two more pharmacology questions. Uh, good stuff. And uh, again, stop the, stop the video, see if you can get them right before I get to the answer and uh, see how you do. So hope you like the video, guys. All right, guys, it says, which of the following medications would be the most appropriate short-term pharmacological solution? And our choices are physostigmine, atropine, bethanicol, scopolamine, edrophonium. The question reads, a 66-year-old male undergoes a minor surgical procedure. Post-procedure, he is having more difficulty with voiding urine, which of the following medications would be the most appropriate short-term pharmacological solution. So the just guy just had a surgical procedure, and he's, he's having some urinary uh, retention issues. Now, just based off memory, can you, do you remember which one this is? Physostigmine, atropine, botanicol, scopolamine, uh, edrophonium. Now, even if you didn't know... Uh, could you eliminate any of these guys? Well, I mean, even that could be that could be hard. This guy's, you know, this guy's holding the urine, so there, there could be like an anticholinergic uh, element to it. Anyways, they want him to facilitate that. Now, we, we remember that acetylcholine, you know, just based off the mechanism, sodium, calcium, um, and then releases releases it, comes across, can hit the receptor, and then it's acetylcholine esterase. Says, hey man, time for you to go home. You know, get off the receptor, choline goes back, gets recycled with the sodium. Uh, acetylcholine actually goes back to the presynaptic side as well and then kind of shuts it down. If we have too much acetylcholine, right, then we get our, our dumbbells, right? That's going to be our diarrhea, uh, urination, uh, the meiosis, okay? Um, uh, I'm say the, the, the emesis. Uh, the bronco, the bronco uh, rhea, you know, it's, it's, it's wet, right? I should, I should say, like, it makes it easier to remember these. The lacrimation and then the salivation, everything's wet. Diarrhea, urination, uh, the myoso, meiosis, muscle weakness, uh, the bronco rhea, emesis, lacrimation, salivation. If it was anticholinergic, and then this is, this, it's the opposite, basically. How does a hair, uh, blind as bat, dry as a bone. Uh, Etc. Right? It's the opposite of, of basically of these. So this guy's having trouble hold, uh, avoiding his urine. So it's, uh, you, you don't want to give another, uh, say, anticholinergic. We want something that's going to facilitate it. We something that's going to make it happen. Now, Fizo is in that category. You know, if we just had to categorize these things, there's a category that says, look, I'm going to give you something that looks like acetylcholine essentially, and that's going to be our, um, you know, acetylcholine itself. That's going to be our carbocol or pilocarpine, uh, and then bethanicol, bethanicol. We have our <clears throat> guys that work indirectly, that work on this acetylcholine esterase, saying, hey man, you go away for a little bit, let acetylcholine kind of linger linger around. And then this is going to, and these are the reversible ones, are going to be our edrophonium, our physostigmine, fixes atropine overdose, neo uh, stigmine, peridostigmine, and denapazil, the Alzheimer's medication. And then we have the one that works on this that's non-reversible, and this is going to be like our uh, toxic sarin gas and stuff like that, okay? So in this situation, we need something that's going to facilitate the urine, uh, you know, make, make him kind of go, uh, you, you know, make him void at least. So which of these actually would be giving more acetylcholine to make the urination happen? And the correct answer is going to be the bethanicol. Okay, answer choice C. Uh, again, Fizo fixes atropine overdose. Atropine's more the anticholinergic uh, realm. Uh, scopolamine is also kind of in that anticholinergic uh, aspect of it. Uh, edrophonium is going to be here, tinselin test, uh, quick test for the myasthenia gravis, so not appropriate for that one. The correct answer, the only answer, and again, it's just knowing mechanism and then categorizing your medications, it's going to be bethanicol. And then this one reads, a uh, 62-year-old male with history of bipolar disorder presents for follow-up after recent manic episode. Lab work reveals elevated creatinine kinase levels. Which of the following drugs most likely contributed to the patient's findings? Okay, so we got bipolar disorder, he was given something, and it affects CK levels. CK levels, you think, somehow issues, well, it's like this. The creatinine can go up in kidney issues, so you can have C, like a CK and B, um, you know, with 
with antipsychotics, but for this purpose, I want you to think kidneys, okay? I could have just said elevate, Im impaired kidney function. Let's just keep it like that for now, okay? Is it uh, clozapine? Is it hal haloperidol? Is it lithium? Is it welbutrin? Or is it uh, duloxetine, also known as Cymbalta? So which of these medications would you give for bipolar, number one? You know, first, you know, the, the, your classic ones would be the, well, it would be the lithium. And another one, it, if it was on here, would be the Depakote, also known as uh, valproic uh, acid. Okay, those are your two classic bipolar medications. You know, could you give Haldol? Yes, you, and you could. Is it the one you want to go for out of the gate? No. Is it the one they're going to ask for so much on step exams? I don't really see it unless they came back with something that was just, the guy got NMS or something like that. Then I'd go with Haldol that they, they may have went with for simplicity because maybe they have, the guy has impairment of the kidneys coming in the door. Clozapine, good one for the schizophrenia, but what do, I, what do we gotta know about clozapine? This is the one that has the agranulocytosis, so you gotta make sure the neutrophils are a good count, so you are elevated enough, and so you gotta make sure you always order the CBC. That was on my step exam. They said, they mentioned this medication and said, what lab would you do on the front end, and you better have put CBC because you gotta check the, the neutrophil count on a weekly basis for the first year. Um, total side note on that is, you know, clozapine levels, you know, you gotta, we gotta start knowing this, but I don't, I don't know how much they're gonna get this one particularly, but smoking affects uh, the 1A2. And so if someone's in the hospital and gets clozapine and they, they get their levels just right, but then they leave and they're a smoker, it's going to decrease the clozapine levels. So that's 1A2, uh, the cytochrome P450 system. But anyways, clozapine, think agranulocytosis, CBC. Haldol, it's a dopamine blocker, first generation, you think EPS, okay? Pen's going dry here. And then lithium, okay? You better be thinking, metabolizing the kidney, but L-M-N-O-P, okay? L-M-N-O-P, L stands for lithium. Uh, M is movement disorder, think tremors. N, this is a nephrogenic diabetes. O, and better know this one, guys, because it was on my step and I got it wrong. Uh, o stands for hypothyroidism, okay? These are side effects of lithium. I'm sorry, my pen's going light here. Um, I just put hyper on my exam, but it, it was hypo. Um, I get kicked myself for that one um, back in the day. I didn't know as well as I knew it now. And the P stands for pregnancy because you got it's teratogenic, okay? So for lithium, you better be thinking movement disorder, tremors, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, hypothyroidism, and pregnancy, it's teratogenic. For Wellbutrin, you better be thinking uh, side effects. It increases, it, well, it decreases seizure threshold, so it puts you at more risk for seizure. They use it a lot for smoking, also as an antidepressant, um, but it, it can increase the possibility of seizures, but doesn't really apply to this one. You wouldn't really give this to someone who's bipolar anyways. You know, the, there's a small population, portion of the population who with bipolar disorder would get worse. And then you have duloxetine, also known as Cymbalta. Um, yeah, they use this one for depression and it also can reduce on the Likert scale than, uh, by one point uh, for chronic pain. So they use it for like a, a neuropathic pain, um, but it's, it's, you know, it's an antidepressant, but again, it knocks it, it's one down on the Likert scale. But you wouldn't use it for bipolar because it's an antidepressant, which may precipitate the bipolar. So I get rid of all these antidepressants Clozapine just doesn't match. So down between Haldol and Lithium, which one affects the kidneys per se? Um, the creatinine levels in the kidneys, and this would be the Lithium. For Lithium, what other lab would you get? On someone out of the gate, you would make sure you do a kidney function, which is a basic metabolic or a complete metabolic, whichever one they're gonna give, offer you on that, both of them would get the kidney. But you'd also wanna make sure you check the thyroid, right? Because it can cause hypothyroid. So you wanna get a TSH level. Um, if Depakote was on here, I'd be thinking uh, liver. You know, make sure that you get a hepatic um, panel, so a complete metabolic, which would have the hepatic AST, ALT on it, because Depakote, valproic, valproic acid, is metabolized through the liver. So if someone who's bipolar who's got kidney issues, you give them Depakote. You know, if there's an alcoholic who's uh, a bipolar person as well, well, you don't want to give them, and they have impairment of the liver, you would give them lithium per se as a choice, as, as an option, okay, just from a book perspective. So the correct answer, the only answer in this situation is going to be C, lithium. Hope it's helpful, guys.